Okay, uh, the purpose of this video is to go over the new uh, command base system for FIRST Robotics uh, 2020 season. Um, in the past, um, I've done a video in Eclipse on the old command base system, um, but last year, uh, 2019, uh, FIRST Robotics moved to Visual Studio Code as their ID of choice. Uh, and in 2020, they've moved to a new kind of design paradigm for their command base system. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through and go over um, the new system. Um, this video is going to be done in Java, and it's going to be targeting kind of new programmers and uh, rookie teams um, to get up and running just a drivetrain um, and those basic things. Um, to speed up the video, um, what I've done is I've just kind of had my code um, in uh, Notepad++ files and I'm just going to copy and paste that code across as I go through. Um, but I am going to go through in the order that I would program um, a robot from scratch. And so you're going to see um, how I would go about things and I'll try and explain them as best I can. Um, only prereq for this video um, would be um, just some basic Java knowledge. Um, if you don't have any Java knowledge, probably be a good idea to take a look at my YouTube channel and just kind of take a look at my uh, Java 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 videos to give you a basic overview uh, and an intro to that. Um, but let's get going. That's not the purpose of this video. Um, one other thing I'd like to say is um, before you get started on this, you need um, a first robotic specific version of Visual Studio Code installed. Uh, I would just Google uh, FRC Java install and it will take you through the steps um, to install uh, the software as needed. Um, but that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to kind of get you going um, as um, a programmer in the new command base system uh, for FIRST Robotics. So let's get going. So first thing I would do is I would click up here. Um, if your library is installed properly and the extensions are installed properly um, for Visual Studio Code, you'll have this little button up here. Uh, it's a WPI library button. You can click on that and it's going to give you a bunch of different options. Uh, the option we want is create a new project. You might have to type that in or scroll down to find it, um, but we want that create a new project. So you're going to click on that. Um, the type of project that we want, we don't want an example. We want a template. So you're going to choose template. You're going to choose Java for the sake of this tutorial, not C++. And then you're going to select uh, command robot is the one we want. Okay, and then it's going to ask you for a folder you want to keep your stuff in. You can see that I have a whole bunch of projects here uh, in this FRC projects folder. Uh, that folder looks fine for me. You may want to choose a different location uh, on your hard drive. Um, I'm going to leave that the same. And then I'm just going to call this toot1. Um, my team number is 6841. So I'm going to enter that in. And I'm just going to click on generate. Um, open this next window. And then it's going to generate basically a skeleton piece of code um, for a command based system. So the first thing we're going to take a look at uh, in the file explorer, which is this kind of icon here. So we're going to go under source and we're going to go under Java. And there's kind of four main files and then two folders that we're going to be using for this program. So I would say the main uh, would just be kind of where our robot initializes. I'm not even going to go in there. There's not much we need to actually ever do in there. Uh, our robot Java um, kind of controls the life cycle of our robot. So if I click in here really quickly, um, what I can see is I can see, okay, this initializes uh, a timed robot. Uh, it has a robot init, which kind of gets our robot up and running, runs once. A robot periodic probably runs all the time. Uh, you can see different modes initialized, like autonomous. And that autonomous has its own periodic uh, kind of loop there, and then a teleop period. Um, and you can see one thing that is important in here uh, to us, or is of note anyways, I guess it's all important. But you can see we have an instance of our robot container declared there. And we're going to work in robot container a fair bit. Uh, robot container, if I open that up, is going to be where we initialize all of our commands and our subsystems. So we are going to be using that a fair bit. Um, this other file or class that we're going to see here is constants, and that's where we're going to save anything in our robot um, that doesn't change any any kind of, um, I would say, variable, but it's the opposite of constant. 
Uh, but any value that, that's not going to change while a robot runs, uh, things like PWM numbers, things like speeds, um, that's going to help us when we want to tune our robot. So you just have one class to go to uh, to change those values um, after you deploy. And, and you can do that in between deploys and then change up your speed or um, change a PWM number if you want to wire something different. Um, but all those things are going to be inside those that constants uh, class. Now you have two folders here, uh, commands and subsystems. And my recommendation whenever you start um, to program a robot is start with the first subsystem. And usually that kind of first subsystem that seems like it makes the most sense is your drivetrain. You want to get your robot moving. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to right click on the subsystems. You're going to go down to create a new class or command. And we want to find that new subsystem as an option. Because that's the class that we want to extend or inherit from. So a subsystem new in brackets, that's what I want to choose. And I'm going to call this one drive train. Just using camel casing. Uh, that's just a good coding convention uh, for naming our classes. And then I just want to hit enter. Okay, and then I have um, just kind of the skeleton code for my drivetrain set up there. Okay, so I have that here. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do inside my drivetrain is I actually want to uh, declare some speed controllers because I'm going to have four speed controllers on my robot that we're going to wire on. Uh, it's going to control my drivetrain, my four motors on my drivetrain. So I'm just going to grab the code for that. Um, just over here, I'll grab some other things as well. There's a few other things we need to declare and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but I'm going to grab this here, head back over to Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to plop those in. So now a few things, um, as I declare these different uh, spark motor controllers, and then I control declare also uh, two speed controller groups, one for my left motors and one for my right motors, and then this differential drive, I declared all those things. Uh, but I don't have the necessary libraries to run those things. So I'm just going to add those now. You do that just with this quick fix. It's really easy. Um, Visual Studio Code makes that really easy. I just hover over top of that Spark, and then it says Quick Fix. Gives me the right option is the first one here, Import Spark um, from WPI Lib. I'm going to do that. Those error messages are going to go away. I'm going to do the same thing here for the Speed Controller group. It's also a member of WPI Library. And same thing with Differential Group. Quick fix, import, and you can see it's added those libraries at the top there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do with these things is I need to instantiate them inside the constructor. So I'm going to pop back over to Notepad++. I grab the code to do that. And I'm sitting right here. Copy, back over, paste that in here. And you can see um, a few more errors, but I'll sort those in a second. So we have a left front motor, okay, it's a new spark. And then what it's looking for here is a PWM number to set that spark to so it can be wired. Uh, I have a set inverted set to false. Um, later on, we're probably gonna need to, to change a few of these values. Um, until you actually run some code on your robot, uh, it's always tough to tell uh, if you're gonna need to invert a motor or not. Um, so sometimes it's a good idea actually to, to comment out um, all your motor controllers except for one, run it, see which way it's running, and then set this inverted to true or false based on what um, you expect it to want to do. It usually goes the opposite direction or it goes the right direction. And you can change those set inverted to true or false depending on that. Uh, but right for now, um, so we have our motor controllers being declared here. You have the, that speed controller groups for left motors, and you can see it takes in both the left front, okay, and then it takes in the left back. That makes sense. It's called left motors. Right motors takes in right front, right back, and then those are those um, speed controller groups are taken in by this differential drive as left and right motors that we see here. Okay, so all that kind of makes sense. Uh, if I only had two motors on my drivetrain. I wouldn't need to use this kind of speed controller group. I would just could just plop in there left for left motor and right motor um, if those were the motors I have. Okay, but let's get rid of these errors here. Um, I've declared these, and like I said, I'm, we're going to store any kind of constants in that constants class, and so it doesn't see that I have that. I don't have that that uh, import yet, so I'm going to click on the quick fix here, 
and it's going to direct me to import constants frc robot i want to do that and then that error message goes away um, but we have these other error messages here i have this left front right front and left back right back well i don't actually have those constants in my constants file yet but i can do that automatically i can automatically create them in drivetrain just by right clicking on here or just hovering and then clicking on quick fix create constant left front in type constant that's what i want to do and i want to do that for all four of these and then i'm going to set their values there we go okay so now i'm going to pop over constants and what we can see here is it did create uh, those constants for me i've left front set to zero right front set to zero as well well you know what they're all going to need different pwm numbers so i'm just going to go with my first four pwms that's easy uh, zero one if i can click two and three so i have those all set to the pwms that i'm going to wire them to i'm just going to actually make a little note here uh, pwms for wiring team Okay, so my wiring team can know, oh, this is where I need to wire left front motor, right front motor, um, and we'll get those wired up, and that's good. You can set those to whatever you want. I think up to nine, I think we have nine PWMs as option, maybe 10, zero to nine, I think. So I think probably 10 PWM options. Uh, we could use CAN bus system, um, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, it's easier if we just uh, do PWMs. Um, simple to program Sparks for that. Okay, so I have those constants there. I go back to the drivetrain. I'm error free. Uh, now what I want to do, uh, you can see it has one of its own methods, uh, but we want to add our own kind of method. And the first one we're going to add is called drive with joysticks. 